Drought is an ever-present threat to those of us in West Texas and South Texas where we have Bob White quail. And it's such an important feature. It drives our management out here, or it should, because it has tremendous impact. It's an insidious threat. It's always with us. We live on the edge of a desert. I often say there's two ways to spell drought, D-R-O-U-T-H and D-R-O-U-G-H-T. I prefer the latter because between the beginning and the end, it's rough in the middle. This Bob White post is gonna talk about strategies for learning how to cope with drought relative to quail management. We do several things here on the research ranch that try to mitigate the impacts of this dry weather. One is spreader dams, or what we call quail oasis, to improve the microclimate for quail habitat. The second one is, putting water on the ground to try to improve a cooler microclimate, give quail a place to go to when it's 110 degrees in the shade. And the third aspect is trying to put more hens into renesting by feeding them a protein ration. So we're gonna talk about those three practices. Maybe you'll find some that you can find that will help you cope with drought. This first installment is what we call quail oases or spreader dams. I got this idea from a guy named Sherman Hammond out at Fort Stockton, Texas, who said, I wanna keep every inch of rain that falls on my property and every inch that my upstream neighbor gives me. And it has a real impact on quail habitat. These spreader dams, these quail oasis, uh, serve several functions as we've talked about, but one of the most important from a standpoint of quail is the availability of insects, arthropods, meals ready to eat if you're a quail. And what we found in some of our previous studies out in the Fort Stockton area is that we improved by having these spreader dams, we grew about 25 times more vegetation than the immediately adjacent uplands. And that translated into five times more arthropods. So these little oases are literally that. And they provide structure, they provide food, they provide a cooler microclimate. A lot of things you're accomplishing by implementing this practice. Of course, water is important for every living creature, quail included. Now, quail can get a lot of the water they need from the insects and the greens that they eat, but on these really hot, dry times like we're in now, having access to water is a plus. Now, quail or other wildlife really don't like to drink from up on top of a trough like this. In fact, it can be a death trap. We've found dead birds, quail that have been drowned in situations like this. It's better to put that water at ground level. One way to do that is just to let some water slop over. Got this idea from the late Sherman Hammond out in Fort Stockton. He would always say that goes against the grain for any rancher in West Texas to intentionally overflow a trough like this. But if you keep it brim full and the wind blows, now when does the wind blow in West Texas? All the time. So that water would slosh out, create a little seep out here. The quail will come to that. Other types of wildlife will come to that. It's a much cooler microclimate, probably 20 degrees cooler on that moist soil than over here in the, un, uh, the, the undampened country. It's gonna attract insects, which are good for quail. It's gonna grow little green things, little green grasses, little green forbs. Here, we have plains bristle grass, which is one of the better seed producing grasses for Bob Whites. And as you look around, you don't see it anywhere else. This seep, we often say just add water, and, uh, and that was the key to making this a pretty good little honey hole for quail. Again, you got insects, you got seeds, you got a good quail house right here, you got a cool microclimate. Six o'clock when it's 104, this is where I'd be. One of the ways that drought really hurts you in quail situation, when you have a dry fall, winter, spring, which is exactly what we've had, a lot of your quail just don't go into breeding condition. The, the reproductive pump just isn't primed. And so we're trying to overcome that by feeding a layer ration. So what we've got here is a 24% protein pellet. And we put these out. Some of the pastures get the protein pellets. Some get milo. Some get protein and milo. Some get nothing. And then we have quail radio collared in these pastures so we can determine how many nests are produced by the quail in a particular treatment. Feeding any kind of wildlife feed is grossly inefficient. Now we've put some cages around these to try to improve the amount of feed that goes into our target critter, which in this case is quail. But we also monitor our feeders with game cameras to find out what percent of the visitations at this feed site are by quail versus raccoons, white-tailed deer, 
coyotes, everything likes it. And again, everything is starving to death right now. So providing feed is always inefficient, probably even more so in a dry situation like we're in now. Two years ago, we did this experiment and we saw an intriguing number of nests in our protein plus milo fed areas. We hope that by feeding that layer ration that we can prime the reproductive pump, put those hens in the nesting condition and as a result, then we can kind of mitigate the impacts that this dry fall, winter, and spring have had, and we'll have more quail chicks to result from that. One of the keystone concepts in ecology is the idea of diversity. Diversity is good. Species diversity, the more kinds of plants we've got, the better off we are. Never is that more true than in a drought. Here we have wolfberry, good shrub for quail. Typically we'd be making a good fruit. It's not gonna make any this year because of the dry weather. Same situation with this one, loat bush, very common. Last year it was loaded with fruits, this year none. That means food availability is gonna be a concern this year, not only for the quail, but for the enemies of quail. Coyotes aren't gonna be eating loat bush fruits, they're gonna be looking for quail. So all of these things impinge upon a quail's ability to survive. And as managers, we gotta appreciate the fact that drought is a real force to be reckoned with. We gotta to try to think of some of these ways that we can lessen the impact of that drought on our quail.